Hi, right. how's it going, everybody? My name is Infamous Isaac, and I'm here with a video on Avatar: The Way of the Water, the second movie in the Avatar franchise, which is now confirmed or at least planned to be a franchise. James Cameron was talking about how he wants eight movies to like come out and release. You know, like that. That that sounds crazy, but <laughs> I can see how he wants to because, wow, it's it's crazy. It's genuinely crazy. But you know, let me talk about the the spoiler-free stuff because. I've been wanting to talk about this movie for a long time though. I, I I didn't get the chance to watch it in theaters, so I watched it, you know, uh, like a couple months later. Well, I think it's April now. Yeah, it came out back in December, so five months ago, which is crazy, right? Like, crazy how time passes by like that. Is wild. Just something to look back on. But yeah, let me talk about the spoiler stuff, um, the spoiler-free stuff now, and then spoiler stuff later. So this movie, you know, like 14 years later. No, no. 13 years later i think movie came out back in like 2009 i think that's already 20 yeah 14 years ago so it's, it's been a while it's almost been 15 years there was a point in my life where i was born before this movie and it was not a long time after that it came out so it's just that that's crazy like i think uh seven years i was seven years old when this movie came out it's crazy and then now i'm almost 21 when, when this movie is here now that's just wild to think about but this movie, highly anticipated, highly, highly, highly anticipated, because A, people really liked this movie when it came out because of the CGI and just overall how crazy it was, like how creative, how cool it was. And now it's been almost 20 years, or excuse me, a decade, a, a, a decade and a half, I think that's how you would say it. Yeah, a decade and a half, almost a decade and a half, and people have been waiting, people have been waiting to see, because a, a sequel's been rumored for the longest time, right? So, the fact that it's here now, it's, will it deliver? Will it be better than the first one? Will it be, uh, will it be good, period? Like, stuff like that, right? People were just antsy to see what was going to happen, because people, people have their opinions on the first one, you, you, you like it or you don't, I liked it, I thought it was good. I, 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 I see why people really watched this movie, why it was... I think the first or second highest grossing movie until any game came out but this movie I can see why it made so much money <laughs> so now with the second one did I think it delivered yes but in some facets it didn't and to me I feel like some character decisions just didn't make sense to me and one thing about this movie is that to me it can be like the whole movie could just not happen if one question was answered and i'll I'll get to that in the spoiler section but this one question will make sense when you look at it and it's just like it, it was there with me the entire time when i was watching and it's just like this movie didn't need to happen like the like, the rest like two and a half hours of this movie or maybe like two hours wouldn't have needed to happen if this question was answered or if this answer was arrived at a lot sooner right and I feel like that's just weird to me because why why would why would this need to happen? Why would this entire movie need to happen when we feel like the or excuse me when I feel like the established characters would have come to this this, this decision already, right? Especially considering that established characters did come to this decision. It's just that the some of the main cast didn't, and it just felt super weird. Like some of the character decisions felt out of pocket and not like the characters that we were that we met in the beginning at least some of them some of them were great some of them weren't and there's just a bunch of flip-flopping between this one character he's he, he's young he's a kid so i understand that he's not gonna know everything but the amount of times that he switched sides is crazy and he, he he's not doing it intentionally because he's young and he's stupid he's just trying to he's he's going with his emotions right you know makes sense when i explain it but he's just after another just switching switching and switching and switching it's super weird because one moment you think oh maybe it's this guy nope it's the other guy and, oh may maybe it's this guy nope vice versa all this stuff it's just super weird it's super weird to look at because the movie doesn't seem to know what he's gonna do either <laughs> so we're just left guessing and then at a certain point you just get tired of guessing so it's like wh wh whatever you know he, he he's alive cool whatever whatever <laughs> but it's just this movie does what avatar one did where the world building is the best part along with the cgi and while i actually wanted to talk about this too the cgi 
So some characters in this movie look great, genuinely amazing. Like that the, the character designs have improved so much. The avatars just look better and better and better. Look way better than the first one. Like in the first one, you could tell that they were CGI. If you look back on it, like 14 years, like from now, you look back 14 years ago and you see it. Back then, of course, people couldn't tell because it was that crazy. Like, it was that realistic. But now, when you look at it and you see this movie, like this world looks almost real. Like it, it, like it looks like wow. They spent a lot of money on this. It looks like this, like this is what Earth would look like, type stuff, right? So it's just crazy to look at it from this lens and just seeing borderline realistic visuals that are CGI. Like this, this isn't real, and these people aren't real, but they seem so realistic, like photorealistic, that you could you could believe it. And you suspend your disbelief because when they're next to each other, when I can't say the the name of them and human beings they they look so real and it's not because I don't know how to pronounce it it's just spoilers right they look so real like it looks natural when they're together and that's that's great I love that it's not jarring it's not like the uh, the, the the phantom menace in 1999 or spy kids 3 or the matrix in 1999 <laughs> it's it's genuinely just crazy and I love it but they also have their bad ones. They they have some misses. And some of these characters, bro, like, when you see some of these characters, they look like memes of characters that, like, oh, what, what type of guy do you like? And then they show a picture of, like, Shrek with, like, a... a a Hispanic bull haircut, or like with the uh, with those curly uh, hairstyle that people on TikTok wear a lot, it it looks like some of these people look like TikTokers or like New York Hispanic people, bro. Like, and I would know because I've seen a bunch of them because I I live in the East Coast and I'm also from Dominican, so I know what people look like like that because I've seen it, I've been around it, right? So it's just it's just funny to me, and I'm not trying to be like racist or like say anything about that, but it's just it's just funny because looking at some of these characters, some of these um, I can't say the name because of spoilers, but looking at some of these people, it's genuinely so funny because I can just imagine this person being like a, a human being, and then being called like uh, like Eric or or Edgar, you know, or Jose. Jose Manel or something like that, bro. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> it generally just looks like New York, bro. It's crazy. <laughs> but, you know, bad, like, looking characters aside, this movie generally looks beautiful. It's clean looking, amazing looking. So, I'm not trying to, like, drag it on that front, but it is just something that I noticed. Like, take it as a nitpick, take it out of a complaint. Either way, I feel like it is a negative, but it's, it's a, it's, drowned out by how good the movie looks period so that's fine the story overall is just like um i feel like the first movie's story was better it was simpler it, it, it didn't have so many flip-flopping between it knew what it wanted to do with the characters and it didn't have the weight of the first movie you know because the second movie has to follow up on the first movie it had to be better right so it doesn't have that weight on its shoulders no pressure and they can do whatever they want right so in this movie, there's there's that pressure of, like, we have characters that have already been established, new worlds, new stuff, new people showing up, but we still have to follow that Avatar way, right? Like, I, I have no doubt that James Cameron knows what he's doing, because if he didn't, he wouldn't have gotten greenlit for a sequel, right? But it feels like that pressure is felt in this movie, and while it isn't immense, it is felt for me. So it's like, that's kind of a detriment to it. In the story at least it felt like there was a lot of sections where why is this happening or why why are they doing this right and one thing about the story i feel like it was cool genuinely like it was interesting but i still prefer the first one better because it that, that nostalgia of the first one isn't gonna you know be taken away easily maybe like 10 years from now when i rewatch it and i look at one and two in their own like echo chambers you just see i'll prefer the second one but overall it's just like i prefer the first one right now like in my immediate reaction after after watching it like right now i prefer the first one but you know it's not to say that the again you know, the second one is bad it's just my preference right now but um world building this one the second one has better world building 
And that's saying something because Avatar 1 was so good at building the world that it's in, building the, the planet that they're on and just getting you invested that this is this could be your the planet that you live on, right? Because it has its own ecosystem, its own way of life, its own factions and clans, its own indigenous people, you know? Like, it's so cool to think about that, right? But in this one, it does that again, but better, right? And it, it, it won't make sense again until I explain it in the spoiler section, but... I feel like it, it does it here better, but a movie could have been like 30 minutes shorter. I feel like in subsections in this movie, I love three hour movies, by the way. Don't get that misunderstood, right? I, I love John Wick 4, Dune, it was almost three hours. Batman was great. Avatar 1 was three hours. Like, I love three hour movies. But Avatar 2 felt like it didn't need to be because the other two, or the other three at least, like John Wick 4 probably didn't need to be three hours long because you know at the end of the day it's just an action movie right so you could have cut down back on the action but you know i'm not gonna be saying that so don't worry <laughs> dude as well it felt like it could have been a little shorter but it was also building the world and the batman some people say it could be shorter i feel like it could have been but not by much right avatar 2 felt like it could have been shorter by a significant amount like a good 30 to 40 minutes of the movie could have been gone as because of the middle of it right where the world building is being like is being shown and it's being expanded upon you see everything right and it's cool like i i genuinely love the world building but i won't lie to you guys like it it can be much it can be a little much it it because watching a three-hour movie is difficult for anybody no matter who you are finding the time to do that is difficult because at the end of the day you're like you're awake for like 12 hours right 12 hours in a day uh oh what's it called every day or at the very least hopefully if you if you take three hours out of that day, you're left with a nine hour day. And if you're working, that means that you barely have any time to do anything for yourself, right? So it's just it's just a huge commitment. It's a huge investment. And taking that much commitment away from the or excuse me, taking that much time from that movie away and having like a two hour and like thirty minute movie or the same point gets across, I feel like would have been to its to its um well it would have improved the movie is what I'm trying to say. And it also would have made it more accessible because, again, who has the time to watch a three-hour movie all the time? I got lucky and I was able to watch it today, but I had to split it up. I watched like an hour of the movie yesterday and I watched the rest of it today. So I literally couldn't watch the three-hour movie in one session because it's difficult. <laughs> it's really difficult to do that. So I don't, I, I don't blame people for not wanting to watch a three-hour movie. So don't, don't worry, I understand. But overall like this movie i feel like the acting was good sometimes it was flat but it overall delivered in most facets i feel like the villain was good some some would say some would have issue with the villain i'll explain that in the spoiler stuff but i i feel like he was good and just overall like i think this movie is a good sequel but i don't think it's better than the first movie so i'm gonna give it like a 7.5 to an 8 it's not a bad movie definitely not a bad movie by any stretch of the imagination but I prefer the first one more, and that's just my opinion. At least my, my immediate reaction to the first movie and the second one. But overall, like, I'm just excited to see what comes of this franchise, because since there's so much planned and so much ahead of this franchise because of the ending of this movie, too, it, like, anything is possible. Genuinely, anything is possible. So I just can't wait to see what happens. But yeah, so spoiler free section is over. If anything like that's half of the video done <laughs> because my opinion is right there all my opinion on this movie is all there if you don't want to watch the rest of the video it's just going to be me talking about the story and overall just sp specificities excuse me of the movie so if you don't care about that then you 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 can go you know as i see what i'm going to be talking about so thank you all for watching if you do leave but if not here's the spoiler section spoiler free section over so, Avatar 2, huh? This movie, I've been waiting for it for like a couple months. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> I've been waiting for it for a couple months compared to the people who waited 14 years for it. So, I, I, I can't say I had my anticipation building for a long time. But, it's crazy just being able to watch this movie and seeing like it's actually real. Because, you know, when I was like 7 and I saw that this movie was coming out, like, Avatar was everywhere. It was literally everywhere. So you couldn't escape it. 
and then just over the years just it losing like um popularity but still being known because of the lack of updates and just no no real content being known about it you 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 have this thought in your back of your head like i never watched that so when i watch it right i love sci- sci-fi so i gave it a watch and now i'm here with the second one so let's just get into it this movie starts with jake sully and natiri and all the navi in the forest you know them just living life after defeating the sky people and explaining what really happened so all the sky people except for the people that were on jake's side left and so they went back to earth and jake on the other hand he started establishing himself as the turok bakto and just how he's basically the one the chosen one him and the tiri have four children three of them are born from the tiri one of them is born from grace's avatar who is still still alive but like it's kind of like in a vegetative state so in reality she's not alive alive it's just her body's alive but the person isn't really and so jake adopted um kitty and all right so yeah uh jake and tiri have four children the oldest one being the tam then you have kitty and you have lock and what's her face uh took those are all four of their children and you have spider kind of being like a, a family friend but in reality he's not their 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 child and he just hangs out with them all the time because um he don't really, he's a human child you know he's a he's not a novel and he um what's it called he's actually the son of the colonel i forgot his name but um the the bad guy from the last movie he's he's his son and he actually had a baby on board like uh in the ship so they couldn't send him back so they had to raise him here and those are some of the main characters you know the main characters from the last movie aren't really like important anymore so it's just going to be those five and the characters that we meet along the way or excuse me those six because that'll come into play later but yeah 10 years pass and all of uh what's this dude's name uh jake's uh children are young young like children still but for the most part children the teenagers the tam again being like probably the closest to an adult but they're all chilling they're having a good time and then one day the sky people come back and now they're they're trying to colonize the planet because earth is dying right and jake is just basically like dog they're after us so we can't stay here like we can't bring these people to the forest we have to leave and so jake decides all right i'm no longer the 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 chief leader so i'm i'm going to leave i'm going to go somewhere else and you guys will be fine because they're not going to be coming after you all right so good luck but we're gone and this is the question that i was talking about in the movie where why why did jake have to leave his people to go to another like that 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 just seems like he's abandoning his people more than he is protect protecting his people because at the end of the day he's a forest navi that's what his avatar is but he he just left you know he left because again he wanted to protect his family and also protect his people but it just seemed like he was more running away and that he could have come to that decision of like but why run away right why run away when i could defend my people like this movie wouldn't have needed to happen if he just stayed home but he didn't he left and i'll explain why it wouldn't have needed to happen later on so he runs away and he goes to um a different clan a different tribe he goes to the to the water tribe and they're they're just a bunch of seafaring people who overall live in water and just their their whole ecosystem and lifestyle and culture is based around it like imagine again new york where it's close to water but overall you live on land and you have florida which is a lot more land or excuse me water based where since it's so close to the water and it's so hot all the time you don't really need to be on land as much you can live more on the water type stuff and that that's basically what it's like and i know florida isn't like it's it's land based too like new york but it has more water based stuff in it compared to new york where it's seasonal based right but oh and well, for people who aren't like american u- uh, viewers or people from the united states literally the 
the the water tribe is like a peninsula so it's just water it's water based while the 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 forest navi are again forest navi they're based in the forest so just if that comparison landed on deaf ears that that's basically what i'm trying to explain but yeah so jake goes over there and he's like dog please please harbor us i am the Torok makato please help us like and then they're just like yeah sure why not and the rest of the movie like from 40 minutes in to like two hours in is basically jake his family getting uh, or jake his family in the tribe getting accustomed to each other and just learning about each other and learning the water ways right while the other part is what's it called the colonel so if you if you remember him he actually cloned himself he cloned his memory and put it into an avatar and that wasn't explained in the first movie because that wasn't planned in the first movie but now he's back because he put his memories into an avatar and he's a clone the original colonel is dead this is supposed to be the same man but they're not the same person so at the end of the day he does harbor that hatred for jake sully but he is a different person so he's not the same colonel but he is the colonel and his side of the story is spent basically going with spider because he managed to capture him during one of the raids in when the when the sky people came back because he was actually there and he caught spider and all of them and so what's it called he's using spider as a way to find jake sully but also that's his son right so he's gonna have some attachment to him and spider and and no, colonel are just getting along they're they're learning more about each other but then spider sees the negative side to colonel the the marine right and while he's looking for jake sully he burns down a couple of the water tribes like um villages and he raises it to the to the ground so it's like dang man you're really evil and it's just like this is what we have to do you know to find jake sully because they have to colonize this planet uh because you know again earth is, is dying so they have to do something but back with jake and all them they're learning and loak is um one of jake's children as i mentioned before he's he's kind of seen as a troublemaker but in reality it's more in the sense that he's just misunderstood by his father while he does get himself into trouble he is he is that type of character he he is loved by his family it's just that his father's really hard on him and that's one of the things that i wanted to mention about jake uh this movie where he feels like you know he feels like a father but he feels too like like he's too hard on look or loak i think is how you pronounce it where him and the tam just get the brunt of jake's anger and just d disappointment and scorn and it feels like jake just doesn't understand that these are children you know these are his children that he's treating them more like soldiers than he is actual children you know and that comes at a cost later on in the movie but jake learns too late that these are his children he has to love them and nurture them while natiri does that for him at the end of the day being hard on his children he has to understand that there's a mix to it there's a balance where you can't just always put the pressure on your children to be better and like at the end of the day it's out of love right it's out of it's out of care for his children that he does this because they do do some stupid stuff but he has to understand like they have to find that balance between i'm going to be hard on you out of love and I'm gonna care for you out of love you know it's it, it's that balance that I, I wish that just I, I wish he understood and I understand why he's like that right because he's a marine at the end of the day he's gonna be like that so it's it's understood but I feel like he just learns that lesson too late in the movie it doesn't realize it. it doesn't understand his children so it's like dang man that sucks but yeah the movie's just spent learning more about the tribe people getting accustomed to some of the tribe but like the the children basically getting their own side stuff where jake isn't really the main character but he is the main character and it's just seeing how they develop overall and it's cool like i, I enjoy this part of the movie well could it have been shorter yes wholeheartedly it could have been shorter a lot shorter but they built a lot of plots in this movie and just a lot of characters and it's super cool right but i definitely feel like it could have been shorter for sure 
definitely could have been shorter. But as he progressed in the movie, we find out about this um, this race of animals that is connected to the water tribe, and Loak finds one of them, and he was actually outcasted, like uh, the the animal, and Loak is trying to figure out why, but. The reason was because his family got killed and because he was the sole survivor of that attack because the the, the sky people humans killed him he was outcasted because you see it as a murderer because that blood is on his hands which is like it's a tribal like very primal way of thinking about it but i can see why they think like that it's just like i don't agree with it and neither neither do they but it's the way that they live their lives so we have to respect it at the end of the day that's just how it's gonna be but i'm sorry by the way I, i'm stuffy because <clears throat> my my ac is directly over my bed so it's it's gonna be affecting me like that but regardless um what's it called lawak tries to plea for him when he goes back to the tribe and they just again they they see him as an outcast so they can't do it and on the other side you have the colonel hunting Jake Sully, he finds the tribes, he finds uh, the animals and how they're connected to the tribe, and he's like, all right, we're going to put some bait with one of, the, one of the animals, and we're going to have Jake Sully come out, and this is where the final part of the movie starts coming out, where the Jake Sully's tribe, the, the new tribe that he's a part of, he, they, they, um, Colonel takes his children, he takes all four of his children, because Loak went to go warn the the animal that they're they're hunting for them and that you need to go because he's not he's an outcast so he doesn't have any warning right so the walk the chief who um i forgot his name uh his uh his two i think two to three children go with them as well so it's seven children out there and well jake has to go find them because you know they're those, those are his children those are people's tribe you know it's important so the whole tribe goes to war and goes to find the colonel. And they find the ship and the colonel is just like, yo, dog, come at me, Jake. Like one on one, you alone, come over here. You your kids will die if you don't come alone. And so Jake goes alone and Luwak's um friend comes from beneath because he's stuck around underground. Like underwater, excuse me. And he lifted the shit from the bottom <laughs> like almost flipped it and or actually excuse me not, not flipped it he he landed on top of it and he has super thick armor so his bullets don't really hurt him but harpoons do and like uh echolocation disruptors do as well so they he he basically gives jake an opening to go attack the colonel and so now it's just all-out war and everybody's fighting things are going crazy um, they're, they're trying to get their kids back, and Natayum gets caught in a crossfire while saving Lawak and his, and his family, right? And so he gets shot. Jake and Atiri go to, go, go, to, go to find him, and the ship is just on fire. The war is going on like crazy. Everything is happening, right? And it's nighttime now, and Natayum's bleeding out, and he dies in their arms, right? And it, I'm not gonna lie, it got me, it got me emotional, it got me a little emotional, because it just felt like Nateum didn't deserve this, but it wasn't Luwak's fault, it was more like Luwak was put into this position, and while he isn't completely, like, exempt from guilt, all of them are guilty, right? It all just, to me, stems back from Jake's behavior, like, Jake's behavior to, towards Luwak made Luwak act out, and Nateum, who was his older brother, had to go cover for him and help him. And it's just like, it's a triangle effect that keeps happening, that keeps going. And because Nateum went to go help him, he skivvied off from his duties, but he's still doing his duties because he's protecting his brother, which is what Jake told him to do. But because it got them in trouble, now Jake is mad at them. And then it just circles back to Jake yelling at Lawak. And it's just, it, it just seems so like, why don't you just try to understand them, right? understand the place that they're coming from and why they're doing it because even though they're they're, they're children right they're younger than you and that doesn't mean that there's nonsensical um reasoning behind their actions like they're doing it for a reason right so why not just try to understand that 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 that's what's bothering me about it and he's treating them like soldiers 
but even then like soldiers have understanding between their 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 higher ups like so it just never made sense to me why he's so hard on his children but i understand why it's because it's jake's character and i feel like it wasn't shown like that in the first movie but it's because he's a marine that that he's treating them like that so it's not out of nowhere but it's just such a difference between the first and second movie it's it's weird to me it's super weird but yeah so Nateum is dead now Jake goes back to the ship to find the rest of them because not all of them are back some of them are still on the ship Spider is on the ship as well because he's with the colonel and he's trying to help out Jake's family all this stuff and it leads to Jake and the colonel fighting after Natiri bargains with the colonel because she's holding hostage spider and just it threatens to kill him in reality she wasn't going to but it was definitely like a wow she probably would have if she was forced to though <laughs> it, it was a weird situation but this movie definitely shows jake's dark side and Natiri's dark side a grieving mother and a father who with, with like his family on his back right definitely shows like a darker side to them but yeah jake and uh, the colonel are fighting now because the colonel's just like, yo, are you really going to let me live, Doug? Me? Out here, you knowing that I'm going to come after you? And then Jake's just like, then let's get it done. And then they start beefing again, bro. But this time, it's a real one-on-one. Both of them in Navi bodies. Both of them one-on-one. No help from the city. Just him versus him. It's crazy. Super cool fight. Meanwhile, Natiri's trying to help the kids escape. Her and Tuck get stuck underwater, so they don't really have any way to escape. Uh, Kitty and Spider um, find uh, or watch are found by Luck, so they um, go to try to find Kitty and the TD and what's her face, um, Jake. There you go. And Jake beats. He wins his ones. He 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 comes out on top, but he's about to die, right? And Luck finds him while Kitty. And Spider try to find um, the other people, right? Spider finds the Colonel first and actually helps him out. And then Kitty finds her mother and her little sister. And they all manage to get out on top. Uh, Spider drops off the Colonel somewhere else and goes back to the, the Sully family. And after that, they start grieving their their lost child. And Spider's back. The Lawak is still alive. Tuck and uh, Kitty are still alive. Natiri and Jake are still alive. The chief's daughter and son are still alive. And it's just, it, it's a loss, but they're going to recover, right? They have to grieve first, but they're going to recover. And so they have a funeral for Nateum. And now it's just moving on, basically being accepted fully into the water tribe. And understanding now, Jake fully understands that he can't run. He can't run anymore. He has to fight. He has to fight the people who are trying to take over his home. And this is where my problem comes up. Why did he come to this decision now, right? I understand why he came to the decision. because of Mateum's sacrifice. But it's the fact that this decision could have been made a lot earlier in the movie. 30 to 40 minutes into the movie, this, he could have made this decision. And it would have been a completely different movie. It would have not been Avatar Way of the Water. It would have been Avatar Way of the Forest, bro. Like, they, they would not have needed to have the rest of this movie if he just came to that decision in the beginning. And it just felt like, no, this movie isn't pointless. It's not. Nowhere near pointless. But why did it happen? Why did he have to come to that decision at the end of the movie? Why didn't he just hunker down and say, let's fight? Well, that's what he did in the first movie. That's literally what he did in the first movie. That man decided to fight for the Navi and said, no more running. We're not, I'm not siding with the people I don't agree with. I'm fighting with the Navi. And that's what he did. He won. So why didn't he do it in this one? Why did he betray the people that he fought with? Or, well, not betray, but abandon the people that he fought with just to go do, it, do the same thing with the other people. It just seems so weird to me. I don't, I don't get why he would decide that. It's super strange. Super, super strange. But that, and you also have Spider as well, where he's he's the one that was flip-flopping all around, where I'm with Colonel, I'm with Jake, I'm with Colonel, I'm with Jake. 
and it's like okay jake is your adopted father in a sense like he's like an uncle the colonel is your father but he's not blood father he's i'm the clone of your father so we're somewhat related right but why was he flip-flopping so much right and that that answer that that question could be answered oh it's because it's his father or the people that raised him right and it's like yeah of course he's a kid and he also doesn't know how to handle these complex emotions right and it's like okay that's understandable but the movie didn't have to flip-flop so much why was he flip-flopping so much it didn't need to happen that man switched sides six to eight different times and it's like why why why'd that need to happen so much right that didn't need to happen so it's just like even at the end of the movie where he saves the colonel and then goes back to jake it's like spider what are you doing <laughs> like if it, if you're gonna go back to jake why save the colonel and it's like okay 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 i understand it's because that man's a good person at the end of the day he wants to help people right and the colonel treated him nice but the colonel is not exempt from his sins that man tried to kill so many people and killed Natayim. So why would you save him, right? When he's hurting your family, the people that you consider family. It doesn't make sense. And you've seen what the colonel can do. He's raised villages. He literally hurt so many people. And yet you still saved him because he's your father. It's like the flip-flopping definitely didn't need to happen as much as it did. Okay, I understand him flip-flopping between in some instances. But the amount that it actually happened is like, okay. Let's relax a little bit. <laughs> Let's just relax. And I'm sorry, like, I never mentioned this before, but if I sound passionate, it's because, like, I care about these movies. And it's just genuine, like, concerns that I have. I don't mean to say, like, it's a bad thing. Or, like, oh, I hate this movie now because it's garbage or whatever. No, I'm just passionate about it, right? And I don't I don't want it to come off like, oh, these guys are so stupid. How are they so inept that they couldn't think about this? Like, no. This is just criticism, right? At the end of the day, this is just me critiquing what I saw from something that I liked, right? If I if if I was genuinely hitting on something, I, I would not be as passionate as I am now, right? And if you've seen it before in some videos where I'm not, I'm not liking something, right? But don't take this as like hate. I'm not trying to hate, right? This is just criticism, so I don't I don't want that to be misconstrued. But regardless, like this movie just has some questionable decisions, questionable things like plot points. That's like, okay, it's kind of weird, but overall i think that this movie is pretty good the movie just looks amazing in certain parts like the final like couple minutes of the movie beautiful genuinely beautiful amazing to look at in some instances not really but it's beautiful it looks great decent story great um what's it called uh well world building yeah world building great world building and just overall i feel like it's a good sequel but not a great movie Again, definitely like a 7.5 to an 8 out of 10. But yeah, you know, it's going to be it for me for now. This, uh, this movie's going down in the history books as the sequel to Avatar. And can't wait to see what happens in the, in the third movie when that comes out, if that comes out in my lifetime. <laughs> so yeah, I'll see you all in the next video. Uh, hope you all have a great rest of your day. Peace.